Welcome back to Gator Games Fan TV. It is the preview show for this weekend's Allianz National Football League action. Four finals to run through. Uh, four National Football League finals. Division 1, Division 2, Division 3 and Division 4. We're live to preview the games, discuss the games, break them down in more detail. Uh, it is just going to be me today. Uh, a few late pullouts and everything in, in regards to a few guests uh, and whatnot. But... That's okay. Um, these things happen. So it's just going to be me today. Um, but we're going to run through the games anyways, discuss the matches. And um, yeah, look, I'm excited. Absolutely excited to get to Crow Park this weekend. Um, in particular on Sunday, um, Dublin Derry, Donegal Armagh. Like it's an absolutely brilliant double header. And obviously anyone who's going to be there on Saturday as well, down Westmead, Leash Leitrim, um, two absolute cracking games that they pose to be, uh, in fairness, or four cracking games, we should really say. So, yeah, we're going to be breaking the games down, discussing them, um, obviously giving my predictions along the way as well. And, um, yeah, look, I'd be very curious to know your opinions, your thoughts on this weekend's games. And anyone who is tuning in, if you could hit the like button and subscribe, that would be absolutely brilliant. <clears throat> uh, RGC says here, hiya. Yeah. yeah, how's things, my man? Hope all is well. Cheers, anyone. Who uh, who is tuned in? I suppose. Look, there is no other place to start than the Division One final. We'll start with the Division One final, and we'll work our way down to the Division uh, Four final. Yeah, look, I mean, obviously, here we go. Dublin and Derry, part two. Obviously, both the both of these two played each other um, a couple of weeks ago. I was at that game in Celtic Park, albeit. Derry did rest players. Um, there's no doubt about that. Uh, Connor Glass obviously didn't play. I don't think Garrett McInnes uh, featured. Oh, McAvoy didn't feature. It, was, it definitely wasn't Derry's best start at 15 by any stretch of the imagination. They obviously rested and rotated their team ever so slightly. And maybe Mickey Hart was being as uh, cute as Christmas there in terms of um, you know recognizing that there could be a likelihood that Derry and Dublin play each other in a league final uh, just a couple of weeks later. But, um, yeah, look, I mean, it's a massive game. Massive game um, in the sense of Dublin have looked unstoppable so far this year. They've looked breathtaking. They've looked spectacular. They've looked as good as they've looked since 2019. Um, possibly, you know, as good as Dublin have looked in a long, long time. You know, 2019 is obviously the year... Dublin win five in a row. 2020 is obviously a very difficult year to judge because Dublin, obviously with COVID and everything else, it was very, very hard to judge that year. Dublin only played one Division One team en route to winning the All-Ireland, and that was obviously Mayo in the final. So this is definitely the best Dublin have looked. And like the depth of players that they have, um, like the players that we haven't even seen yet that still need to come back into the side, it's been absolutely frightening. And I think the most impressive thing from a Dublin perspective is the fact that you have lads coming, you know, coming the fringe players, the likes of Killian McGuinness, Ross McGarry, um, you've got Killian O'Gara, you know, coming on and making making a big impact. Pater O'Cover Burn, I think, has been very impressive. Tom Lahiff has been very impressive. Um, those players have been very, very good, you know, and those players have really stood up this year. And I think that's probably maybe what should be the most frightening thing for other supporters, but also something that should get Dublin fans very excited because you know what Paul Mannion brings. You know what Kieran Kilkenny brings. You know Khan now, who's in the form of his life. It looks like a player rejuvenated. Looks you know better than he's looked in again, maybe since 2019, 2020. Um, you know he he's been absolutely fantastic, obviously as well. You know Cormac Costello, who I think a lot of people are forgetting about, um, hasn't obviously featured too often in in recent matches in the league. So there's a huge amount of depth all across the board uh, in in Dublin's team and it's going to be very interesting to see obviously how they blend that into the championship um if we remember i think it was the i think it was the loud game last year when uh stephen cluxton came back into the fall for dublin obviously in the last game of the regular league so it'll be interesting to see does he feature this weekend does he make a slight appearance against Derry? that that would be very interesting to see obviously with the game being in, in crow park and everything else but um Look, at the same time for Derry, like you can't take anything away from them. Um, Shane McGuigan's been 
phenomenal two goals and 40 points uh, from him so far in the National Football League. Top score, interesting enough, Con O'Callaghan's the second top score with three goals and 29 points. Um, but yeah, and, and the thing about Derry that's very interesting about them is the amount of scores they're getting. They're getting so many scores all around the field, whether it be Connor Glass, whether it be... Um, whether it be the likes of Emma Bradley, um, who, who's obviously came back into the side and looks very impressive as well. Owen McAvoy, I think, has been very good since coming back into the side. Um, so Derry, Derry have been very, very impressive. Uh, Lakeland Murray, that, that was the player, it was, it was the name that came into my head there that evaded me. Lakeland Murray, I think, has been, um, obviously came in against Ross Common, goal and five points from him. He he was absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, Derry have a, a wealth of ways to, um, to have hurt uh, to hurt Dublin in the final Dean says how's things Aaron remember being on the league finals mm-hmm. preview show last year it feels like deja vu seeing Dublin and Derry meet each other in a league final again yeah hope all is well mate hope all is well um yeah it's 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 interesting isn't it obviously Dublin and Derry in the league final last year division two and then here they are again in division one I, I don't know if that's ever happened before by the way actually that'd be an interesting statistic in terms of um might have to go back and look into that one in terms of, of two sides being in the Division 2 final and then going you know straight up and both of them go into Division 1 final. It's, it's an interesting one. Kieran says, uh, outside bet of the week, four one-sided finals at Dublin Armagh down and leash to all win comfortably uh, in the end. Um, yeah, that's a, that's an interesting opinion. I, I don't think Dublin and Derry and Armagh Donegal are going to be one-sided. Um, I know Dublin have been like very, very strong, but I think Derry are still a very good team. And let's not forget, look, Derry finished above Dublin in the league. Um, albeit look, Dublin beat Derry, and you know, Dublin have what won five games on the spin uh, since obviously the opening two defeats. But like you can't you can't sleep on Derry, they're gonna come to Crow Park with a game plan. I think Mickey Hart is gonna go as strong as he can because look, I don't see the point in coming to Crow Park, resting players, taking a massive beating. You know what kind of preparation does that set yourself yourself up for in the championship? You know, I think you want to go as strong as possible. You want to lay down a marker, um, and let's not forget as well that Derry, when they've come to Crow Park in the last couple of years against big teams, they have lost. You know, they obviously lost to Dublin in the Division Two final last year. Albeit, look fair enough, the Division Two final doesn't have as much weight as the National Football League in itself. Um, so maybe you could say Derry weren't too interested in that. But to be honest, I remember like watching that game. I don't think Dublin were that interested as well, uh, in all honesty. But, um, you know, they obviously lost to Kerry in the all Ireland semi-finals. I think back to the year previous in 2022, they lost to Galway. So I do think that Derry need to take this game seriously. They need to come out and, and give Dublin a, uh, a big, big go and really really try and upset them and ruffle their feathers a little bit because if Derry can beat Dublin, that lays down a massive statement and, um, you know, it probably, I wouldn't say it puts Derry favourites, but it puts them bang in the conversation, even more so. Look, they're already in the conversation, but I do think they'll be even more so in the conversation should they uh, get over the line. Dean says, I know it's early days, but Dublin are looking unstoppable and uh, as a Dub fan, I'm loving the way things are going and they can only get better. And I back us to beat Derry by four this weekend. Yeah, look, that's that's an absolutely fair prediction. TJ says probably more important for Derry to win a national league than another Ulster. Should be a good game. Gavin says like the merch. Yeah, no problem. Uh, shout out to Capture Athletics who were kind enough to send this over. Very, very much appreciate it. Uh, Paul says fancy plenty of goals from both sides. Yeah, I mean, there was a good few goals in the game last year. I think Dublin scored like five goals, wasn't it, last year in the Division Two final. Um, so, and there has been a good few goals when these two have played each other in, in you know, in the last couple of games. So, um, yeah, in, in regards to that comment, in terms of probably more important for Derry to win a national league than Ulster than another Ulster. I, I don't know if I'd agree. I suppose it's interesting though, isn't it, because of the way the championship is structured, like. It is, you know, the provincial championship cha- championships still have so much weight in terms of history, in terms of, you know, you want to get over the line. But when you actually deep it, it's like you win the Ulster Championship and then you still go into the group stage that everyone else is playing in. Do you know what I mean? Fair enough, you're you're seeded. But, you know, like, there's not really actually that much of a reward, really. But, 
yeah, look, I, I think for Derry just to win this and, and obviously go into Crow Park uh, or go into the Ulster Championship with momentum because I think that's the uh, that's the most important thing. In fairness, discussing some key players, look, Shane McGuigan uh, has been like, uh, I mean, you know, I don't shy away and, and nobody shies away in, in saying that he is obviously Derry's uh, main man. It's going to be interesting to see actually who does pick him up from a Dublin perspective. Like in your ideal world, you would have Mick Fitzsimons obviously pick him up. I think he is Dublin's best defender, but he hasn't, you know, kicked the ball obviously in the league. So we don't know entirely what the overall scenario is with him. You know, you're looking at the last game, Darren Newcomb obviously played in there uh, in it. Um, fullback Sean McMahon can obviously play, play there as well. Theo Clancy maybe to come back in. He he could pick him up. Um, do you do something like an Owen Merchant maybe to uh, to pick him up? Like like obviously he picked up David Clifford. That that's going to be an interesting matchup to see who Dublin pick um, to go on um, Shane McGuigan. And then obviously at the other end, who's going to go on Conor Callahan? Like do you, do you put Chrissy McCaig on him? That would be the obvious choice. Um, it would have to be Chrissy McCaig, wouldn't it? It would have to be Chrissy McCaig. But again, there is so many interesting matchups. Like Dublin have so much wealth of attacking options. It's very hard to predict who actually starts. Um, like Killy McGuinness, who was excellent the last day, three points. He he, you know, you can't take him out of side, he can't take Ross McGarry out of side. Uh Colm Baskell comes back in, scores two goals and three points. But at the same time, you know, you have Paul Mannion coming off the bench, scoring two points. So yeah, look, it's it's a good headache, most certainly, to have from uh, from a Desi Farrell perspective. Make no mistake about that. Sennon says, I'm going on Sunday up the dubs. Me too. Looking forward to it. Uh, Dean says, last year's Division Two League final finished Dublin 4-6, 11 points. Yeah, four goals, six points, 11 points. It was a strange game, wasn't it? Because I do remember Dublin not actually playing particularly well, and then we scored two or three goals, and I think in a row or something like that. It was a bit of a mad game, but... Yeah, look, in terms of a prediction, uh, I mean, th th there is so much that goes into this. Like Dublin's use of stopping kickouts recently has been very effective. Like turning th the amount of times they turn Toronto over successively, um, it it's something clearly Dublin have worked on relentlessly, really, over the past year. We really saw in full effect, really, against Mayo in the quarterfinals last year in that second half where Mayo just couldn't get out. Um, and that kick-out press, I think Dublin are probably one of the best in the country at doing it in terms of just consistently turning teams over, um, and then also how quick they move the ball afterwards. Like that second phase of play, the ball has just moved so quickly. Um, it's very, very hard for other teams to deal with. So, look, that's going to be interesting. Midfield battle will be very interesting. Brendan Rogers, Connor Glass, Brian Fenton, um, you know, in an ideal world, you'd have James McCarthy in there as well. But will he come back? Probably not. Um, so you could be looking at Pader Okofik Byrne, Tom Lahiff, maybe Brian Howard. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting, all right. Um, heading in myself, looking forward to it. Wonder if we will get a decent crowd. Yeah, I think there will be a good crowd at this one, especially with Armagh and Donegal playing each other as well. Um, Armagh fans. Always fill out Crow Park in fairness to them. They're they're a very well supported county. Derry are as well. Um Donegal are as well. So like it's four football mad counties. So it won't be a sellout, obviously. Uh, you know, I think you'd probably get forty five thousand, maybe fifty thousand. Um maybe that's a stretch. I would hope it'd be something like that. I don't think it'd be anything more than that, but hopefully it's not something like thirty or forty thousand. Um but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But yeah, look, in terms of a prediction, um, I am going to go for a Dublin win. I, th I think Dublin have been, in the form that they're in, I just can't see how Derry will be able to contain them. I do think Mickey Hart will come with a game plan, make no question about it. I think he will set up defensively. Derry will get a lot of men behind the ball, and they'll try and frustrate the living daylights out of Dublin, because I think you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Dublin team right now in the way that they're playing, the confidence that they're playing with. They'll just, they, they would just, you know, they, they have the ability in the opening 20 minutes to rip Derry to shreds, you know, if if both sides go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So I think Mickey Hart and Derry, they will be overly cautious. Um, they will keep the ball for, um, you know, certain, you know, during attacks to try and take this thing out of Dublin. But look, at the same time, you know, Derry won't go there to 
um, you know, keep the score down. They're going there to win. And, you know, I think Mickey Hart will set Derry up to try and contain Dublin. And the more the game goes on, I think you'll start to see Derry um, play very fastly on the counter-attack. I think this is going to be a very vintage Mickey Hart style setup team, um, like what he's done when he was manager of Tyrone for many years. Um, and I think it, I think it will be similar. At the same time, Dublin are very used to playing against those type of teams nowadays, so that could also back for her as well. But um, I, I could see Derry sitting in, making life difficult, but I, I would still think Dublin should have enough to pick them off. Like, you're thinking of the options Dublin can bring off the bench, and it is just frightening. Like, even if this game's in the balance, or even if they're two or three points down, you have you have so many options there to come on. Um, and that is the worry from a Derry perspective. Uh, Alan says Dublin by 10. Can't see Dublin getting beaten the way Dublin are playing. Uh, no, nobody will touch them, frightening the players they have and to come back in there we go um toss on sean mcmahon he's done well so far and the same with key murphy yeah key murphy's another one who's been absolutely brilliant should be some serious color on sunday enjoy the game hope my tongue-in-cheek prediction is wrong absolutely um close the game up until half time and then dublin might run away with it yeah absolutely it will be it will be interesting to see make no question um about that one i mean I mean, like, look, obviously, I'm a Dublin fan, so you want Dublin to win, but I, I obviously want it to be a good spectacle, a good game. Um, I think it would actually benefit Dublin if this was a closer game, if that makes sense, just in the sense that Dublin aren't going to get any tests, really, in Leinster. They're, they're going to absolutely walk Leinster. The group stages, you know, you might get one or two tests in there, but realistically, it, 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 you know, the group stages are... A little bit of a farce, really, with three teams going through and everything else. There's not really a whole lot to worry about there. So this could be Dublin's last significant test, really, possibly until an all quarter quarterfinal. So I don't think it actually does Dublin any favours if they just go there and absolutely hammer Derry because then, you know, the, Dublin are, are only going to be more favourites than they already are. The pressure is only going to incre increase more. Not that Dublin, this Dublin team ever fail under pressure. To, you know, they probably use the pressure better than anyone but i just think obviously you know beating Derry by by such a huge margin um i think could maybe go against them a little bit later in the year they, they could be they, they might be battle hardened a little bit um but look we'll see we'll see what happens we will see what happens um would you scrap the league finals says dean here uh i wouldn't know i wouldn't because I think at the end of the day, there, um, you know, there, there are big occasions for teams to play in Crow Park. Um, it's it's a chance for the likes of Armand Donegal to get into Crow Park, Leash and Leitrim, you know, like Leitrim getting to Crow Park. You know, if there wasn't league finals, like, like realistically, when would Leitrim ever get to Crow Park? You know, um, probably never. We maybe in a Talchin Cup or, or, or something like that. So I think to scrap the league finals would be a massive, massive shame. Um, I can understand that maybe a little bit for Division One, uh, like ever so slightly, but again, you can't make rules for one division and not apply them to all the other divisions. So, um, I'd I'd keep them personally. I enjoy them. I, I think they're good spectacle spectacles in Crow Park. I think it's both teams usually play great football as well. There's not as much to lose. Like the fact you're already promoted as well, um. It kind of means you don't. You know, there's, there's not as much jeopardy, so it's kind of like a free hit, and that's why a lot of the time, like league finals, have produced some cracking games down the years, in my opinion. Um, except for last year's league final between Mayo and Galway, that wasn't really a great game. But uh, especially the other, like Division Two and Division Three, they usually do um, feature great games. But uh, but there we go. Gavin says, yeah, like it's only Leitrim's sixth time in Croker. There you go. There you go. And I think their last time in Croker was 2019, wasn't it? Coincidentally, that was against Derry, I think, in the uh, Division 4 final, um, which is kind of mad, kind of mad. But there we go. But uh, yeah, in terms of prediction, I'll go with Dublin to come through. Uh, I'm going to say by three, three points. But it could be closer. It could be. It could be a little bit closer. Um, it most certainly could be. Donegal Armagh is obviously the Division Two final. Um, this is another very interesting one as well, with the fact that there is there could you know I'd be very surprised if these two don't play each other in the championship at some point. Um, 
obviously both are on separate sides of the draw uh, in Ulster. So, the, you know, Donegal would obviously have to get through Derry en route to possibly playing Armagh. But um, in terms of group stages or later on in the championship, I could see these two clashing horns again. Obviously, they played each other in the league already this year. That finished as a draw. Um, if you've got Paddy McBrearty in flying form for Donegal, a goal and 26 points. Here and now, he's could be injured uh, or he's going to be ruled out and, and hearing a couple of other Donegal players might potentially be missing as well. So that's going to be a bit of a blow uh, from a Donegal perspective. Uh, interesting enough, first time Jim McGuinness manages Donegal in Crow Park since the 2014 All-Ireland Final. So it's going to be very interesting seeing him on the sidelines in Crow Park. But um, yeah, look, I think, I, I think from an Armagh perspective, like they've been very, very good in terms of like they've kept a lot of their stronger players sort of in the background. Like we haven't seen too much of Rian O'Neill, haven't seen too much of the likes of Jarlio Burns. Um Stephen Campbell's come in and out. Uh Connor Turbot's obviously been a bit more of a, a regular starter, but like Armagh have definitely rested and rotated their team quite, you know, in moments and introduced a few other players like Ushin Conaty, I think has been very, very impressive. Um, Key McConville's come in uh, here and there. Ross McQuillan obviously gets himself a, a goal against Cavan a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I remember hearing about him a couple of years ago as well. So, yeah, look, I, I think Armagh are coming in very well. Um, and I, I, I kind, of, kind of fancy Armagh to, to win this one, in all honesty. I think with Donegal's injuries, some of the players that they have missing, um, the fact that Donegal play Derry in two weeks' time, and the fact that, Ar look, Armagh play for Mana is obviously not the same, is it? So um, I think Donegal, like, I mean, both sides are obviously in Division 1. That was the big focus. You know, back, back up to Division 1, that's the main aim. But I could see Armagh turning them over. I could see them doing the business uh, this weekend. And I'm not too sure actually what the odds are for this game. Maybe Donegal are slightly favourites just with the fact that they finished above Armagh in the league, like in first. Obviously not by much, by what, one or two points. Um, and obviously it didn't mean that. Like, they're both promoted at the end of the day. But, yeah, like, I, like Donegal probably may be coming in as slight favourites, but Armagh, for me, I, I do, I think they could do it. But to, but to be fair, at the same time, like, with these two sides knowing each other inside and out, like, Armagh and Donegal have played each other so many times over the last couple of years. Um, they're two sides that know each other inside and out. There's always scuffles on the sidelines, players getting sent off. It seems to be a very... Um, there's a lot of fixtures in Ulster that produce uh, high tech, you know, sort of um, flares and, you know, flare ups between players and everything else. And, and this is certainly another one. And you could see players getting sent off here. I think it could be a bit of a cagey game, you know, like it could be like a 12 points a piece or 13 points a piece. Like I wouldn't be surprised to see this game go to extra time. I know both of these two wouldn't want extra time, but I, I think you could see it happen. Um, I just hope that both saw, both both of these two play the way that we've seen them play in Division Two so far this year because Donegal have, uh, have played some great attack on football at times this year. You know, contrary to belief, what people think about Jim McGuinness and everything else, Armagh have played some very good football as well. They seem to have let the the shackles off ever so slightly. So you just hope that both of these two go for it. You know, go for each other's throats, play great football because. If they do, like this has the potential to be one of the games of the weekend, but it does also have the potential to be one of the biggest anti climaxes of the weekend, just in the sense that um these are two sides so familiar with each other. Um but yeah, look from a Donegal perspective, like you would be looking at uh Ushin Gallen, Kieran Thompson, Michal Langan, Patter Mogan, all these players have looked very, very good uh, so far this season. Kayla McGonagall's been impressive as well. Um as we said before, obviously, Patrick McBurty looks like he's going to be missing, which uh, is most certainly going to be a huge blow. But, um, but yeah, like I think from a, a Donegal perspective, they still have a certain amount of ways that they can't hurt Armagh. Gavin says probably the three favourites for Ulster playing Sunday. Armagh needs silverware, but Jim McGuinness would still want to win it. Yeah, probably is the three favourites or you know, top three probably in, in, in Ulster right now. Um, I mean, it's like I suppose Tyrone on their day can can you know can still beat anyone in in, in Ulster, but 
they haven't shown it really have they over the last couple of years so it's very hard to sort of put them um it is interesting though all right like would you like i suppose do you know what's interesting about Donegal though is there's so much sort of unknowns with Donegal still under under Jim McGuinness in terms of like we kind of know a bit more about Armagh because we've seen them under uh Kira McGinney in the last couple of years we've seen them get to court finals we've saw them get to a an Ulster final like this isn't a new Donegal team in terms of Patrick McBrearty, Ushin Gallen, Caleb McGonagall, a lot of these lads have been knocking about for a, a, a you know a good couple of years. Patrick McBrearty was obviously part of the last Jim McGuinness team. But I think with Donegal, like if they if they go out and beat Armagh, get a big win in Crow Park, then obviously going into the Derry game, that's going to be the real sort of answer to where Donegal are actually at, because it is kind of hard to judge them ever so slightly. Do you know that way in the sense of like you can't say they're all Ireland contenders because they've been playing in Division Two this year, and obviously they were, you know, fairly atrocious last year. New manager, obviously as well. So, getting a bit more of a look at them uh, in the flesh, I think, I think could be could be um, could be very interesting. Ray says our uh, four or five favourites money for them all week as McBurty and McHugh are both out. That is fair. Um, our two thirteen, Donegal got one fourteen. After extra time, I'd say Armagh will have too much after 90 minutes. Yeah, I'd go with Armagh as well by by a point, I think, ever so slightly. Uh, interesting enough, I've seen, you know, I've seen people say, well, you know, could this go to penalties? Uh, I, I don't mean to throw, you know, throw any uh, trauma back to Armagh fans, but like this could, you know, this could, this could be the type of game that would go to penalties. Um, and you know what? If you're an Armagh fan and it goes to penalties, you'd be like, right, well, now's our chance. At least if we lose the penalty shootout, it doesn't really, you know, whatever. We lost the Division 2 final. You know, you're already promoted. But it might be a chance, you know. But look, to be fair to Armagh, I think they'll do it in uh, in normal time, I'm going to say, by two points. Um, but it, but I think Donegal will stay. It'll be interesting to see how Donegal set up. It will be very interesting to see because looking at Donegal, under Jimmy Guinness, and obviously, you know, we don't get to see as much Division Two football on the TV. So, people who've actually been at Donegal games will be able to say more about this. But they, they obviously have gone for teams. They've attacked. They've played good football. They haven't sat back like what many people would have expected when they were playing uh, under Jimmy Guinness in the previous regime. So, um, yeah, look, I think it would be, I think it would be interesting to to see with with Donegal um, in terms of how they how they set up this year. Will, will will they play a defensive brand of football or will they go for teams' throats? Maybe because they were playing a lesser quality of opposition in Division 2, but, uh, but there we go. Aaron says, do you think Donegal will go far in the All-Ireland? Um, right now, I'd say quarterfinals. Um, I think quarterfinals is a realistic game and I think would also be a decent achievement for Jim McGuinness in his first season. Um, can they get beyond that? It's, it's very... Right now, you'd have to say no, but look, you know, with, with new games comes new information, comes new uh, opinions. So, yeah, look, we'll go with uh, Dunny, or we'll go with Armagh. What am I saying? Armagh to win by uh, by a point. Division three, down versus Westmead. Interesting enough, this game actually, in terms of meaning, um, probably poses to be the most meaningful game actually taking place this weekend. And the reason being is obviously. For anyone who doesn't, who isn't aware of the championship structure, you obviously have 16 teams who go into the All Ireland series. You have 16 teams plus New York who go into the Talchin Cup. Um, and how it works is um, your Division One sides obviously go into the Talchin Cup. Your provincial winners go into the Talchin Cup. Or oh, what am I saying? Your Division One teams go into the All Ireland series. Your provincial winners go into the All Ireland series. Your provincial runners up go into the All Ireland series, and then it's basically the next best teams in the league, which usually consists of Division Two sides. Um, but because of the way the championship is structured this year, Clare are on the side of a draw in Munster that has both Tipperary and Waterford, so they're they're going to a Munster final. Do you know what I mean? Like, let's be honest, which means they're going to be in the All Ireland series, which then means potentially you'll have one side who gets promoted from Division Three that won't play in the all Ireland series. And that team will be the team that loses this game. So hopefully I've explained that um, as, as well as I've could. But um, 
yeah, that's what makes this game very important for both of these two sides. And um, yeah, look, I mean, Down have been one of the best attacking teams so far in the country this year. They, they've been an absolutely flying form. Pat Haven's been outstanding. Um, 38 points from him so far this year. Um, he, he's been very impressive from a Down perspective. Um, obviously, with um, you've obviously had Aura Murdoch as well. Players come up from the under 20s, four goals and seven points from him. Daniel Guinness, I've been impressed with. Caleb Doherty's been very good. Liam Kerr. Um, you have a bulk of under 20 players who obviously come true for down in the last couple of seasons who've really sort of um, embedded themselves into the side. And Connor Laverty is obviously managing the under 20s himself. So he, you know, he's, he's done a fairly good job with down as well. But look, Westmead are no strangers to Crow Park. Last time they were in Crow Park, they were, uh, that was the Talchi Cup final, obviously, two years ago. You still have a lot of them lads knocking about, Ron O'Toole, John Heslin, um, who probably hasn't featured as much in the, in the league, but he's come back in towards the end of the league. Uh, Ronan Wallace is there, Sam McCartan, um, Senan Baker has been a very impressive player so far this year. He's their top scorer. So, um, yeah, Westmead, Westmead seem a bit of an odd team. And they're a very hard team to read under Desi Dolan because last year, for example, in Division 3, they had the best attack and the best defence, and yet they didn't get promoted. And you were kind of like, how how has that happened? And, th and they go into the all Ireland series with Tyrone, Armagh and Galway, and everyone was like, they're going to get absolutely battered in every game. Um, and then they nearly beat Armagh. They, you know, they, they, did fairly, they were fairly competitive against Galway and then drew with Tyrone. So... Westmead are an odd team. You never know what you're going to get with them. Even last week, for as an example, they drew, they lost to Sligo, which, you know, look, Sligo are making a lot of progress at the moment and fair play to them, but a lot of people wouldn't have saw that coming, especially with the fact that Westmead, they need, they, you know, there was a chance, they like if Clare had a beat down, Westmead wouldn't have been promoted. So, like, Westmead needed to win that game. Sligo didn't need to win it. So, yeah, Westmead have been a very odd team at the best of times, um, but there we go. JMC says, will you go to the match? Um, I'll go to the Dublin um, Derry game, Armand Donegal. I, I won't go to the to the Division 3 or 4 finals, but um, but I'll certainly watch them on the TV. Hopefully two good, two good games. Do you think Westmead are a good team? Um, yeah, look, I think they're, they're um, on their day, they're a very good side. There's no doubt about it. I think they've proven they can, can compete with... Um, a lot of teams in this country. Um, and look, I think if Westmead were to get back in, you know, to win this game and get back into the All Ireland series, one thing we know at Westmead is they have the potential to maybe not beat big teams, but certainly, you know, make a game or two over. Um, and I think for Westmead, they would want to get back into that All Ireland series because look, they've they've been in the Talchin Cup, they've been there, they've won it, you know, they've they've worn the t shirt. Do they want to go back there? Probably not, but um but there we go. Uh, Gavin says, hope Westmead win it would be a massive step back for them to be in the Talchin again. Uh, James, he says, Ronan Wallace is injured. Yeah, that would be a big loss. Gaelic Guy says, Westmead will shock the odds down 114. Westmead 116. It's very typical of Westmead to do this. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, it would be typical of them to, to put in a big performance. Um, and of course, down, who last time they were coming up, uh, or last time they were in Crow Park, they lost. To Mead um, in the Talchin Cup final last year. So, like, it is interesting. I, I don't necessarily, I actually think down going into the Talchin Cup would possibly be a good thing because they, they're a young team. They could galvanize, they could get back to the final again. And I think it would serve them well. Um, I think it would be better for down football to be in the Talchin Cup than West Mead, just in terms of this, where both teams are at. Um, like, down are a very young side, young players coming through. Whereas Westmead are probably a bit more of an older team. They've had more or less the same team for the last like six, seven years. Um, obviously a few new introductions here and there. So um yeah, yeah, it's interesting. All right. Uh, Terry says, I think Down would should win. I'm also tipping them for the Talchin Cup, but you think that they might actually be uh, in the All Ireland series. Um well yeah, if they win, then I'm pretty sure they will, because obviously the two sides will get relegated from Division 2. So it's 16 teams that go into the all Ireland series. And obviously, the and, and usually it's Division 1 and Division 2. Um, and your, your 
provincial winners, provincial runners up, and then your best placed teams that are remaining in the league. And obviously, your two sides who get relegated from Division One or Division Two will go into Division Three. So you're, you're, the two promoted sides from Division Three are ranked higher than the two sides um, who are relegated. Gaelic Ice says depends on Kildare. And yeah, that is a fair point because Kildare are on the side of the draw in Leinster that contains Westmead and Loud. So um, yeah, there's a lot of permutations. Like Down could beat Westmead, but then Westmead could go on to a Leinster final. And then, yeah, so it's one of them where you kind of just have to wait and see really what happens. The, the championship structure is more complicated than um, Einstein at the best of times, isn't it? You know? Or, or something Einstein would look at. So there we go. But yeah, look, in terms of a prediction, I mean, down are the better side in terms of form. There's, there's, there's get no getting away from that. But Westmead could do it. I could see Westmead doing it. They, they're they sort of like the seat, you know, more of a veteran team and, and they could go to Crow Park and, and stifle down a little bit. Um, Hard one, hard one to call. Probably... I'd, I'd go with Down. I think Down have made more progress, like considering how comfortably they beat Clare as well. Do you know what I mean? Clare are no mugs. Um, I think I think Down have the capabilities to win this game. Um, the worry for Down would be, like, if they fall behind, if they lose their bottle a little bit, they are a young side. Um, and if things start to go wrong, how how will they deal with it? They haven't been in too many scenarios this year where they've gone behind and had to turn it around. So, like, in Crow Park as well, packed crowd, because um, you'd still expect a you know good amount of down Westmead, Leach and Leitrim fans, obviously, to make the trip. So, yeah, that would be um, that be interesting. But, look, I am going to back down. I think they will be too strong, and I think they will run out Division 3 winners. And last but not least, Leach versus Leitrim, two sides who've played each other couple of weeks ago, uh, two weeks ago, as a matter of fact, Leitrim won that game to keep alive their hopes of promotion. And then obviously they needed a favour on the final day from Wexford. They got that favour. They then obviously had to beat Tipperary themselves and they've done that as well. So Leitrim in the Division 4 final, as uh, Gavin was saying there earlier, their sixth time to have ever been in Crow Park. So that goes to to show um, you know how very few of a day that Leitrim get to have in Crow Park. And look for Leash as well. They'll be delighted to get back. Um, you know, there's actually a strong possibility that Leash could be back in Crow Park, you know, in a couple of weeks' time as well in a Leinster semi-final against uh, Dublin. So, you know, probably won't uh, be the same experience as playing Leitrim in Crow Park. But it's Crow Park, you know. Um, you know, but uh, but there we go. Um, Gaelic Oy says for the Dublin game prediction, 3-10, 1-13. Interesting. Um, man says here, Leitrim for the W. Patrick says, down, were poor last time in Crow Park. Yeah, I was at that game against Mead. Um, and I, I predicted them to beat Mead. I was very confident they would beat Mead. Um, and they didn't. <laughs> you know, they, they, they certainly did. Mead were uh, comfortably the better team. Comfortably. Um, and down, Yeah, down just never really got going in that game at all. So, yeah, look, it would be important for down to, to get the victory. Um, and and for their sake, again, if they end up in the Talchin Cup, I actually, because look, in the all Ireland series, it'd be very tough for them to really do anything. Um, going into the Talchin Cup is a trophy they can win. And, you know, if you're in the Talchin Cup and you can win it and you're not good enough for the all Ireland series, then I think you should be aspiring to win that Talchin Cup. You know, at least go into it, win it, and then see where it takes you. Um, so there we go. Uh, Gaelic guy says Leitrim one eleven. Uh, Leitch one eleven. Leitrim two nine. I think Leitrim will be would be more up for it. Uh, there we go. It's massive for Leitrim. Yeah, look, do you know what? It's a free hit for Leitrim. You know, the pressure for Leitrim over the last couple of years and for this year in particular was to get promoted. You know, that's what everyone was talking about. Andy Moran bringing in obviously Mickey Graham. I was seeing him speaking on off the ball earlier today. Like obviously, pressure w w was on Leitrim. They bring back Ryan O'Rourke. They've had a, a couple of a massive, a couple of massive setbacks over the last couple of years. Um, you know, losing to New York. You know, narrowly missing out on promotion. They have had a few fair setbacks, but look, playing in Crow Park, they'll be the under underdogs. Nobody's going to be expecting them to do anything. 
Lee should be massive favourites. Um, we saw the type of score lines Lee should put up this year. Like even in the last game, you know, they scored four goals in about twenty minutes against Waterford. Um, albeit it was against Waterford, and look, no, dis- no disrespect to Waterford football, but um, yeah, like Lee should have been absolutely uh, flying at, at the best of times so far this year, and it'd be very, very hard to. See Leitrim stopped them, but look, Dara Rooney's been very good. 40 points from him. Uh, Ryan O'Rourke, five goals and 18 points. Very impressive. Some other players that have stood out. Barry McNulty, Reardon O'Rourke, Evan Sweeney, Paul Keeney have all looked very, very good as well. Um, and Mickey Graham will have a game plan, no doubt about it. And look, I think the addition of Mickey Graham has been absolutely crucial uh, for, for the likes of an Andy Moran because, you know, in that way, he can learn a bit more. He can see a bit more um, in terms of games tactically and everything else. Um, and look, they obviously got over the line against Leash a couple of weeks ago when they needed to. Um, but Leash, Leash just have Leash are playing some very, very good football. Like at that level, do you know what I mean? Like Mark Barry, two goals and twenty-one points for him. Evan O'Carroll, who's been um, flying at the moment two goals and uh and 19 points so far this year paul kingston's been very good killian roach um like the whole host of players who've who've done the business and done the damage this year so i think i think i think leash will win this i think they will i, I don't think it'll be comfortable but i think it'll be three three maybe four points i think leach will have a couple of moments but um the only thing would be like the fact that Leitrim are already promoted. They have essentially done their job. There's really nothing else to worry about. Like if Leach started very, very strong, got an early goal, went five, six, seven points up in the opening 20 minutes, which could happen considering how good Leash have been at times so far uh, in Division 4 this year. You would worry a little bit for Leitrim just in the sense that like it's a, it is a nothing game in some ways. Um not for their supporters, obviously, and and look, the players um, will appreciate the opportunity to play in Crow Park, make no question about that, but more so in the context of the season, do you know what I mean? They've, they're have they already promoted, so they've already done, they've already achieved their goal. Um, but yeah, look, Le- Leash are flying in terms of their attack and fairness. Um, Aaron says, imagine Leach from a keep burn this year. Do you know what? I, I've completely forgotten about that as well. Um, and he was top scorer, wasn't he, in Division 4 last year? So, yeah, look, um, that, that probably puts it even more into perspective, the achievement that uh, Andy Moore and and, uh, and uh, Mickey Graham have done um, with this Leitrim team. Gavin says, Silverware for Leitrim will be massive. I wonder, was a Connacht in the 90s the last thing they won? Yeah, I think it probably was because 2019 was the league final division four league final they lost that to Derry, um and yeah because i think when they got promoted that year it was the first time in like 20 years or something they'd been promoted so yeah i think i think it probably would be i think it probably would be um and to be fair obviously that kind of final wasn't in crow park so it'd be something massive wouldn't it for them to achieve in crow park yeah, look, it'll be interesting, um, but I am going to go for Leash. I think they do have too much firepower. Their attack can, can certainly do the damage, and I think for Leitrim, they've achieved their goal, they've achieved their objective. It is a bit of a free hit for them, and they'll play without pressure, and I think they'll, they'll worry Leash at different points, but I do think overall Leash will win. I actually think this, this will be a cracking game, to be fair, because I think both sides will just go for it. Um, the Division 4 final always tends to be a great game, in fairness. Both sides, I think, will go for it, um, and I think it will be. I think it will be a cracking game. I think it will absolutely be a cracking game. Interesting enough, last time Leash played in Crow Park, they conceded eight goals uh, against Down, obviously in the, in that uh, Talchin Cup semi final. So they'll certainly want to right the wrongs of that as well, and some of the memories that came with that defeat. So. Uh, yeah, look, I'll go for a Leash victory. I'll say by four. Um, I think Leash will pull away the more the game goes on. But Leitrim could certainly have a few moments to savor as well. Um, yeah, well, I suppose in terms of player of the week and bet of the week, uh, bet of the week or upset of the week, um, the hard one really, isn't it? Like, 
I suppose down would be favourites against Westmead. You could see Westmead doing it. Derry to beat Dublin, you'd certainly get great odds on that. Will it happen though? Probably not, but again, it's not inconceivable. Um, in terms of player of the week, I think you're like you're looking at that game between Dublin and Derry. I think Brian Fenton needs to have a massive game. Um, and to be fair, he more often does. But with Glass and Rogers in that midfield, that'll be absolutely huge. Um, Brian Howard, if he plays, could, could could really have a big game. You're looking at who picks up Shane McGuigan. Do you know, I'll go for Kieran Kilkenny actually because I think this is the type of game that would sue Kilkenny, especially if Derry are sitting back and everything else. Kilkenny will have the ball for large parts. He'll need to pick out players, pick out scores. He'll have time on the ball, which is really when he's at his best. I think he's the perfect player breaking through that blanket defence. I think that's when he, he's at his best. Um, so I'll go with Kieran Kilkenny as player of the week. Um, yeah, well, look, cheers. Anyone who tuned in, let us know in the comments what's your predictions for this weekend's games. I'm going to go for a Dublin win. I'm going to go for Armagh. I'm going to go for Down. And I'm also going to go for Lee. So three, um, four predictions right there in terms of uh, what we think will happen. But yeah, let us know in the comments what what's your predictions. What games are you going to? Um, yeah, l- looking forward to both games. Obviously, on the Saturday, on the Sunday, we'll be covering the match reactions and everything else will be out for all the games. So make sure to stay tuned for that. There might be one for Saturday night, but certainly we will cover as much as we can. So, yeah, cheers anyone who did tune in. Hit the like button and subscribe. My name is Aaron, and we will speak to you all again.